Everything about today's Soyuz launch seemed to bode well. Two, one. Starting with a successful ignition as American Nick Haig and Russian Alexei Ovchinin flew into the blue Kazakhstan sky. But then, just under two minutes in, the booster rockets failed, triggering an automatic emergency mission abort. The men's descent module separated from the rest of the rocket, but rather than a slow, controlled ride back to Earth, they did what's called a ballistic descent, much steeper, faster, and a much rougher ride, say those who've trained for it. It's like uh, shooting a bullet out of a rifle barrel. The crew would have experienced just a fairly benign amount of rotation, about six to seven times Earth's gravity, which is not insignificant. The men made it to the ground in good shape, and later got some precautionary medical attention. The Soyuz launch is a high-profile failure for what has been Russia's most reliable space technology for decades. The implications for Canadian astronaut David Saint-Jacques will likely be significant. Our CBC crew caught up with him outside of Moscow, actually training for a ballistic descent just a few weeks ago. You're concentrating on your, your breathing, how far, how comfortable you are. He's due to fly in the next Soyuz rocket on December 20th. But Russian space analyst Vadim Lukashevich doubts it's possible to do an investigation and still keep that timetable. If it was somebody's mistake, they'll fix it, he says, and will continue to fly, a month or two delay. If it's something more fundamentally wrong with production, it could be longer. That means an indefinite stay for the three astronauts already on board the International Space Station and a need to replace them. No one can afford the Soyuz rockets to be out for long. They're the only way up. Chris Brown, CBC News, Moscow. Now, someone who knows very well what all of that must have felt like is Chris Hadfield. As you'd expect, the retired Canadian astronaut has loads of insight. I caught up with him earlier today. So take me on board that spacecraft, what, what those two astronauts were, were seeing, hearing, but also thinking and doing. During a launch, there are a few critical moments. One is as you go from one set of rockets to another, the, from the first stage to the second stage, you're really focused. As that was happening, the vehicle started shaking wildly, and you could see there was a deceleration. So the crew's like, okay, we got a serious engine problem. They're looking at the displays, they're getting out the manual controls, they're digging into the checklist, making sure they're gonna follow all the next steps. It's something you're hyper trained for, you're super aware. Nothing else in the universe matters, but what's right in front of those guys, that's what they were thinking. And how much control do they have in that well, moment? You, you can take over and fly the thing manually all the way to Earth. In fact, that's what really? we trained to do. Uh, I was trained on my flight to fly it back all by hand, this big controller. But if you just put it in a ballistic mode, if you just let it sort of Which is lob itself back to Earth like yeah. a ball, that's eventually, it's, it's a little higher force on the body, but it, it's simple, that's what they did. So the crew on the ISS, what, what is their thought process now? Because they're, I mean, they're weighing all their options. They're, they're not entirely cut off, right? No, their ship is docked, they can come home anytime they need to if they have an emergency but that ship won't last forever up there it's it's got things in it that can only be certified for so long there's a lifespan of their capsule up yeah there. yeah it's got fuels and things in it that right. don't last forever also I mean the longest anybody's ever been up is like 14 months I think they're up there for the long haul would they leave I mean is that an option that's a big deal to abandon ship I don't think they'll abandon the space station unless we absolutely have to. Would the ISS, I mean, be able to survive, or, or, or do they need to have that daily? Well, it's sort of like any ship at sea. For a little while, it'll keep going by sure. itself, but all machines break. Always good to talk to you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Now, if the Russians aren't able to get the Soyuz fleet back up and running, that would be a big problem because NASA's space shuttle replacement, the Orion, is still years away. The agency has given billions to private aerospace companies to help fill the gap, but. They're not ready yet either. NASA had hoped to start using two different spacecraft by mid next year. Boeing's Starliner capsule and the Crew Dragon vehicle from SpaceX. There have been setbacks and that timetable looks pretty iffy. The Crew Dragon's first manned test flight has been bumped from April 2019 to June. While the Starliner's first flight with people on board has also been rebooked from early summer to August. Still, NASA remains cautiously optimistic that one or both will be ready for manned missions to the ISS by the end of next year.